Портрет человека, похожего на вора и жулика. И я сегодня символически рву этот портрет. We, the people, have finally decided that we will make this country free by all standards. Россия будет свободной! Россия будет свободной! Я считаю, что было бы правильно чтобы съезд поддержал кандидатуру председателя партии Владимира Путина на должность президента страны. Last year on September 24th, President Dmitry Medvedev announced he would not run for a second term. Vladimir Putin would be running instead for a post he has already held twice before. People were in a real stupor for a couple of weeks. Everyone wrote on their blogs that it was time to emigrate. They all calculated how old they would be in 12 years once Putin had finished two more terms in office. Then, on December 4th, Russia held parliamentary elections. A record number of citizen election observers reported fraud. They didn't just witness plain old falsification. It was like a bacchanal of falsification, an insolent disregard for the law. This is what so insulted masses of young, active and creative people and drove them into the streets. Russians head to the polls Sunday for presidential elections where, few doubt, Vladimir Putin will win. But anger and awareness have grown. Something has changed. Huge protests, 50,000 people on December 10th, and nearly 100,000 on December 24th, and tens of thousands more on February 4th. Joining the revolt are many of Russia's young professionals, often believed to be more interested in profit than politics. Now they are emerging as a potent and visible driver towards real democracy. It's really inspiring how uh, many people are protesting. Alek Arlov runs the human rights group Memorial. He was active in the massive street protests two decades ago that sped the collapse of communism, but ultimately failed to establish real democracy. This massive disappointment among those who went out and protested in the 90s turned into disillusionment, intense disillusionment. And that's what we're waking up from right now. In February, Moscow-based activist group Solidarnost seeded plans for a massive pre-election protest. Sergei Yakovlev, a mobile apps designer by day, is an organizer. Until the recent protests erupted, Yakovlev, like many young Russians, limited political grumblings to kitchen table conversations. Every discussion on the kitchen ended with uh, words like, well, uh, people are not ready uh, to act up, to, uh, to express opinion, to fight. Uh, so um, well, we have to wait. Now he joins other young professionals, from entrepreneurs to magazine editors, handing out white ribbons in peaceful yet visible protest. And to connect with a new and growing class of dissatisfied Russians. Yakovlev has been arrested twice since December for protesting without a permit. Until now, Moscow's massive rallies have been sanctioned by the city. In a suburb of Moscow, 20-year-old Vera Kichanova has decided to take on the system in another way. She's running for a seat in city government. Я кандидат в муниципальный депутат нашего района. Хочу вот вам предложить свою программу. Главный вот это вот контингент людей, которые вышли. A large part of those who have attended rallies are able to make logical connections between what's happening at home and in their apartment blocks. Their desire to raise a family, have a good job with a good salary, and the need for fair elections and honest government that won't steal. Для того, что нам нужны честные выборы. People want to see new faces in politics because everyone is sick of the stagnation that has gone on for the last 12 years. But Kichanova says some independent candidates in Moscow have been prevented from running in an attempt to flush out the opposition. At a flash mob where thousands lined Moscow's Garden Ring Road to show solidarity just a week before the presidential elections, Kichanova vowed to push on. There's a week left, and I hope they don't come up with some reason to prevent me from running. I don't think that the energy that exists today will go away. Arlov knows the consequences of taking on the system, 
Last year, he was brought to trial for accusing Chechen president and Kremlin loyalist Ramzan Kadyrov of orchestrating the murder of one of his researchers, Natalia Estemirova. We know that when the government has political interests, trials aren't fair. To our total surprise, I was acquitted. He says the protest movement is built on a foundation of small-scale civil actions that have occurred over the past several years. Every one of these initiatives spread and grew in number, to include more and more people. And these are like the honeycombs of a growing civil society. It's already becoming sort of a routine. It's impossible not to go to a rally. Yakovlev worries that if protests are becoming routine, they're less effective. He says it's time to step up civil disobedience. The time of flash mobs, this time of positive, even ecstatic events uh, with the smiles and white uh, ribbons, it's going away. Now it's time for something more decisive. Already prepared for more fraud in Sunday's elections, thousands of protesters have announced on Facebook that they will come out in force to a rally in central Moscow on Monday. Every time those in power ignore the demands of society, there is always a conflict between the two, and the results are always catastrophic.